This is Evan Abrams, and you're watching a tutorial on how to use the Chromatic Aberration template for sale on evanabrams.com. Using the template is quite simple. All of the settings that you're going to change to make the effect work happen here in Edit My Effects. So you can just go to the effects controls of that and change things like this top value here, which I'll expand so you can see it, which is how often does it shake, and you put in a value from 0 to 1 being zero, never, and one being always. And then how much does it shake, which is gonna be the distance between the aberrations. So it's gonna be a value from zero, being moving none, to as high as you'd like. So it can be as crazy as you believe it should be. A good value I find is 25. And then the last value here is how affected is the original footage, which is basically blending it with the original. So as we start using this, you'll see what I mean. Now, in order to put footage in this, you have to go into the comp that says, put footage in me. And so first you have to import some footage. And once you've brought the footage in, you just put the footage in right here where it says, put footage above me. And this is just some silly stuff from a vacation, but you can get the idea that you put the footage here in above the part that says, put footage in me. And I'm just going to turn the audio off so we don't have to hear it. And then when you go back here to the part that says edit me and you play it through, you can see that the effect is already being applied to the piece. Now when we go in and edit these effects, so let's say we want it to happen all the time. So we put this up to a full one. Then we play that through, we can see it's always moving. And we'd like the effect to be, say, 100% visible. So what this means is that it is going to be as much as the effect can be applied. And as you can see, it's quite extreme in what it's doing. Or you can have it all the way down at zero where nothing is happening and everywhere in between. But it caps out at 100, as in 100% 100 on. And this is really just balancing between the original image and the changes. So we're gonna set this at 50 for our purposes here. And then when you start changing things like how much does it shake, you can see that it starts to go all the way from zero being none. And then we start increasing it and the distance left, right, up and down starts to get more pronounced. So that's what it does. And then, like I said before, how often it's doing it is a value from zero until one, zero being never. So as you can see, it's never doing it all the way up to one as in it is always doing it. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how to make use of this thing. Now, one way you might want to use this is to sync it up to the audio of your video file. So what you can do is you can take this audio, make sure the audio is on, and then back here in the Edit Me portion, you want to go Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio to Keyframes, and then it'll run through and convert all of that audio into keyframes which will create this audio amplitude here. And when you look at its effects, you can see that it has the values of the audio that's going on. And then you can link these things like how much does it shake, how often does it shake, to the sliders of those channels. So if we hold down Alt and we click on, say, how much does it shake, and then we pick whip that to both sliders, it's going to be increasing the effect larger the louder something is. So that's just an easy way that you can have things sync up to audio if that's something that you're interested in doing. But in general, once you have the effects doing whatever you'd like, then you can either render things out of here using the render queue, or you can import this file directly into Premiere to be used there. One thing I will tell you though is that if you want to duplicate multiple instances of this thing, you're going to have to make multiple copies of Edit Me. So we've made Edit Me 2, which if you get into the details of it, has many instances of all of these other layers. And if you want to put in new footage, you're going to have to also duplicate put footage in here and then replace the footages used in here with that new thing. So you want put footage in here too to replace, holding down Alt and dragging it over the selected layers and it will replace all of those with the new footage. So then you can duplicate multiple instances of this, and then when you take this file and you put it into Premiere, then you can select all of the edit me's, which you can then rename things like clip one and 
clip to, etc. And it'll make sense when you import it in there. So this is how basically to use the chromatic aberration template. You do require Adobe After Effects CS 5.5 or newer in order to use it. And this is not backwards compatible with anything before that point. You can download it at evanabrams.com and you should head over to evanabrams.com and find some other interesting things to download there too. Uh, there are of course always tutorials going up on my YouTube channel, so if you like learning about After Effects instead of just buying things for it, that's a good place for you to learn. And hopefully you find this template to be useful in your projects. I'm Evan Abrams, thank you very much for watching and for supporting my channel and everything that I do here, and stay tuned for more products coming out later. And as always, subscribe to the channel because there are new free tutorials there all the time. Thanks again, and I'll see you around the internet.